Africa, home of lions, leopards, cheetahs, hyenas. Basically, the heavyweight division of predators. But do you know what's weird? It never had Smilodons. That's right, the most famous saber-toothed cat in history never roamed Africa. Not once. No bones, no fossils, nothing. Before we figure out why Smilodon never showed up in Africa, we should probably clear up what exactly it was, because not all saber-toothed cats were Smilodons. Smilodon was a genus of big cat that lived in the Americas during the Ice Age. And yeah, they're the ones you're picturing. Stocky bodies, ridiculously long upper canines, and a face that looks like it's halfway between a tiger and a saber. The most famous species was Smilodon fatalis, found mostly in North America, and its even bigger cousin Smilodon populador stalked the plains of South America. These cats weren't built for speed. They had short, thick limbs, massive forearms, and jaws that opened way wider than any modern cat. We're talking about a 120-degree gape, just to fit those fangs in. That's cartoonishly wide, but those fangs weren't for chopping through bone like a lion's teeth. They were like precision daggers, probably used to slash soft tissue in the neck or belly of large prey. And yeah, their prey was huge. We're talking mammoths, giant ground sloths, bison, and even camels. Smilodon was part of a whole Ice Age megafauna ecosystem that looked more like a fantasy game than real life. But here's the kicker. As badass as they were, Smilodons were only found in the Americas. Their fossils show up all over the US, especially the La Brea tar pits in California, and all the way down into Argentina and Brazil. But not a single bone has ever been found in Europe, Asia, or Africa. So how did they end up locked on opposite sides of the world? Well, here's the deal. Smilodon didn't just pop up out of nowhere in North or South America. Its ancestors came from elsewhere, most likely Eurasia, and more specifically, from a saber-toothed cat called Megantirion. Think of Megantirion as the scrappy great-grandparent of Smilodon, smaller, older, and way more widely traveled. At some point, probably around two and a half million years ago, Megantirion, or a close relative, made its way into North America through what's now Alaska and Siberia, the Bering Land Bridge. Back then, sea levels were lower because of glacial cycles, so land animals could literally walk from Asia to North America. No plane ticket is needed. Once the saber-toothed cats got to North America, things got interesting. The environment was loaded with megafauna. Massive herbivores that had never dealt with ambush predators this specialized before. Over time, Megantirion evolved into Smilodon, a cat built like a brawler and equipped with insanely long teeth, perfect for targeting the necks of enormous prey. Then came the second big move. Smilodon crossed into South America. That happened after the formation of the Isthmus of Panama a narrow land connection that allowed animals to move between the continents in what scientists call the Great American Biotic Interchange. Basically, North and South America suddenly became roommates, and species from both sides invaded each other's turf. Smilodon took full advantage. Once in South America, it evolved even further, leading to Smilodon populator, one of the largest saber-toothed cats of all time like lion-sized but more heavily built and with a bite that could wreck a ground sloth's day. So Smilodon had its moment. It spread from North America into South America and became one of the top predators in both regions. But here's the thing, it never left the Americas. Once it crossed into the New World, it stayed there. No fossil evidence has ever shown it making a return trip to Eurasia, let alone reaching Africa, which raises the big question. Why? Why didn't it keep going? Why didn't it spread to other continents like so many other animals did? First, we've got to get one thing straight. Smilodon didn't stay put by choice. It wasn't scared of lions or allergic to the Sahara. It just couldn't get there. The biggest reason? Geography. During the Ice Age, North and South America were connected. That's how Smilodon made its southward move. But Africa was completely cut off from the Americas by vast oceans. There was no land bridge, no ice-covered pathway, 
unless a Smilodon could swim across the entire Atlantic Ocean. <clears throat> Spoiler alert, it couldn't. Africa was out of reach. And even if we imagine a scenario where Smilodon somehow made it to Eurasia first, there were still massive obstacles. The only known migration route into Africa was through the Middle East, via the Sinai or Arabian Peninsula. But this region wasn't exactly a friendly welcome mat. It was mostly hot, arid, and rugged. Not the ideal terrain for a cold-adapted, stocky predator like Smilodon. Plus, Smilodon wasn't a flexible traveler. It was a specialist. Its whole body was engineered for short bursts of power, to tackle slow-moving, massive prey in cooler, open, or lightly forested environments. It wasn't built to chase antelope across scorching savannas or to sneak through dense jungles. And it definitely wasn't built to compete in the African predator lineup. Because here's the other half of the problem. Africa already had a full house. By the time Smilodon could have even hypothetically reached it, Africa had been long dominated by some of the most efficient predators on Earth. Lions, leopards, spotted hyenas, and African wild dogs. These animals weren't just fierce. They were fast, adaptable, and already deeply integrated into the local ecosystems. There was no empty niche for a slow, heavy ambush cat. In fact, being a specialist in Africa could be a death sentence. African ecosystems are brutal. If you can't adapt quickly to droughts, prey migrations, or stiff competition, Smilodon may have been a star in the Ice Age Americas, but in Africa, it would have been like dropping a polar bear into the Sahara and expecting it to thrive. And let's not forget one more thing. Timing. Smilodon evolved relatively late in the Big Cat timeline, around 2.5 million years ago. Which sounds ancient, but by then, Africa had already cycled through multiple waves of predators, including its own saber-toothed cats. Let's start with Megantyrion. We already talked about this cat earlier, one of the most likely ancestors of Smilodon. It lived across Eurasia, and yes, it even showed up in Africa too. Fossil evidence puts it in Africa around 3 to 2.5 million years ago, meaning it wasn't just roaming the north, it had a pretty wide range. It likely hunted in wooded environments, ambushing prey in a style kind of like modern leopards. So, while Smilodon itself never reached Africa, its bloodline definitely passed through there on the way to the Americas. Then, we have Homotherium, sometimes called the scimitar-toothed cat. Homotherium was very different from Smilodon. It had shorter, serrated canines instead of long, dagger-like ones. And it was built for speed. Long legs, lightweight body, forward-facing eyes. It looked almost like a weird mashup of a cheetah and a saber tooth. Homotherium wasn't lurking in the shadows. It was chasing prey down in the open, possibly even hunting in packs. And yes, Homotherium did live in Africa, alongside other continents. Fossils have been found from South Africa all the way to Europe and Asia. It was one of the most widespread saber-toothed cats ever. Then there's Machairidus, the OG saber-tooth. Much older than the others, Machairidus was enormous and lived in Africa millions of years before Smilodon existed. It probably gave rise to both Homotherium and Megantyrium, making it kind of a grandparent to the whole saber-tooth bloodline. So what's the point here? It's not that Africa didn't have saber-tooth cats, it had plenty. It just had different types, shaped by different environments. Each of these cats was fine-tuned for a specific role in its ecosystem. And Africa's ecosystems, with wide savannas, migratory herds, and intense competition, favored cats that could move fast and handle change, not bulky specialists like Smilodon. All right, we've gone through the science, the fossils, and the maps, but now let's have a little fun. Let's say somehow, against all odds, Smilodon actually made it to Africa. Maybe it rafted across the Atlantic on a log. Maybe it took a wrong turn in Panama. Whatever. Let's just say it got there. Would it have survived? Well, maybe, but it would have had a rough time. First problem, the heat. Smilodon wasn't exactly built for the African sun. Most reconstructions show it had a thick, muscular build and possibly even a dense coat. The kind of body made for Ice Age North America, not the blazing heat of the Serengeti. It probably would have struggled with overheating and dehydration, unless it found a cooler, forested niche. 
and those areas are limited in Africa. Second issue, the competition. Even if it found a comfy habitat, it'd be walking into a territory ruled by some of the most efficient killers alive. Lions hunt in groups, leopards are ambush masters, hyenas are relentless and work as a team, cheetahs are pure speed, and wild dogs, honestly underrated. Those guys don't quit. Smilodon, on the other hand, was a solo ambush predator. Slowish, bulky, and dependent on big prey animals that stood still long enough to be tackled. In the Americas, that worked. You had slow giants like ground sloths and juvenile mammoths walking around like dinner on stilts. But in Africa, the prey fights back. Buffaloes, zebras, giraffes, they don't just stand there. They run, they kick, and they travel in herds. The kind of ambush Smilodon relied on might have worked once in a while, but it'd have to burn a lot of energy and take a lot more risks just to eat. Now, could it have adapted? Possibly. Over thousands of years, natural selection might have reshaped it. It could have evolved longer legs, shed some muscle, and maybe even lost a bit of that saber length in exchange for jaw strength or speed. In other words, it might have ended up looking a lot like Homotherium the same similar tooth cat that already lived in Africa. And that's the twist, right? Even if Smilodon had made it to Africa, it probably would have had to evolve into something that already existed there. That's how evolution works. So yeah, in theory, a Smilodon in Africa might have survived if it adapted, if it found the right habitat, and if it could handle the competition. Sometimes being the deadliest predator in one part of the world doesn't mean much when you cross into someone else's territory. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.